Back in 2012, Greg and Jalea Sweezy were sentenced to five years probation after they allowed their 17 year old son, Zachary, to die of appendicitis, even though, as you know, appendicitis deaths are completely preventable. They weren't Christian scientists, but they were members of the Church of the Firstborn, which is a church that also endorses faith healing. Why see a doctor when God will cure all, as is the question asked by the Patheos blog, which wrote about this story. And it has now happened again to another family in the exact same church. This is Travis and Winana Rossiter, who were arrested on charges of manslaughter because they allowed their 12-year-old daughter, Sybil, to die of type 1 diabetes this past February, and a months-long investigation revealed what we now know that the parents withheld necessary and adequate medical attention from her. Here's a quote from Albany Police Captain Eric Carter. The 12 year old had a treatable medical condition and the parents did not provide adequate and necessary medical care to that child. And that unfortunately resulted in the death of her on February 5 of this year. When asked, would she have survived if treated? He said, that's what I was briefed on. Yes, the Rossiters have two other children who I guess we can say fortunately so far have never suffered from a critical yet clearly preventable or treatable disease. The church endorses James 514. If you're not familiar with it, I certainly wasn't until about two hours ago. It states, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. You would think that church members would have learned their lesson by now because not only was there this incident last year, this actually goes back to 1996 when a Lynn County jury convicted the Church of the Firstborns member L L uh, Lloyd Hayes on charges of criminally negligent homicide. His seven-year-old son was dying of a treatable form of leukemia and Hayes was trying to cure it only, Lewis, through the power of prayer. Um, we know that in these cases, the parents are liable. I disagree in this case that it is only manslaughter. I think that at this point we have so much evidence, including from within their own church, that they knew this could happen, that it would probably be more than manslaughter in my mind. But that's not the question I want to put to you. The question I want to put to you, Lewis, is, should the church be liable as an accomplice here? The church has existed as the X factor in a number of these cases now, at least these three. And as we talked about, <clears throat> they endorse literally James 514. Do they have any liability here? As much as I would like them to, unfortunately, I think they don't. And I think it would be almost impossible to, to get them for, for anything related to this. I would hope that in hindsight, maybe some of the, the members there and the, the heads of that church have learned their lesson. Clearly but they haven't. I would say there is no way they have learned their lesson. I really doubt it, too. Um, so that's the question to our viewers. Should the church be liable here? They are encouraging this behavior. After the death of 1996 or the 2012 death, they could have said, listen, 514, John 514, we're going to step back on that a little bit get the appendicitis, get the leukemia treatment, because we've got people dying and people are going to jail here. Um, uh, is the church liable? Let me know.